artists. Today we're going to be exploring different techniques that we can do and use with watercolors. So I'm going to get started with the list of supplies that you'll need for today's art activity. First, you're going to need some white paper. If you only have copy paper, that's fine. I will be using a thicker painting paper. This is an 80 weight paper. If you have copy paper, um, your paper will do a little bit of rippling and might bleed a little bit, but that's okay because it'll dry. Um, you're gonna need some watercolors. I have these watercolor sets. Um, they're both by Crayola, they're both great. Um, they also come with paint brushes in the inside. So if you have one of these at home, it probably came with a paintbrush inside. I have a cup with water to clean the brushes. Um, if your set doesn't include a paintbrush, you will need one. Paper towel. I've also covered my table down um, with a piece of paper so when the paint gets on the table, um, I can just wad up the paper and throw it away. So make sure that you're painting on a surface that you can wipe down or you're painting on top of newspaper or paper that's okay to get paint on and you can wad it up and throw it away when you're done. I'm also going to be showing you um, how to use these liquid watercolors. Liquid watercolors are my favorite thing to paint with. If you're an artist in my classroom, you know this. Um, so I'm using two different kinds. This is by Sargent, and this set comes with all these colors in it. It is missing orange, though. So I also really enjoy using the Blick liquid watercolor. Honestly, any liquid watercolors are the same. They all work great. I have pre-poured them in a little dish that you'll see on the camera. Um, for our watercolor techniques, I also have rubbing alcohol. Um, you can find this probably in your bathroom or your first aid kit. I have some salts and um, I have one of these. I use these in my house for essential oils, but they're also used in your kitchen, like a turkey baster, or perhaps in your bathrooms for like medicines. Um, and this is just going to get the um, rubbing alcohol out of the container and onto my paper, where I'm not having to use anything um, like a spoon, because um, you only want a little bit. Uh, if you don't have one of these, that's fine. A uh, paint, clean paintbrush will be Cool too. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I've already labeled my papers. Um, we are going to be using these papers for tomorrow's lesson in, um, we're going to be doing paper weaving. So um, I'm going to be doing one paper with warm colors and one paper with cool colors. So I've already labeled mine to remind myself, only put warm colors over here and cool colors over here. As a quick reminder, warm colors are red, orange, yellow, pink. Cool colors are green, blue, and violet. Okay, so I have primed all these brushes already with um, soaking in the water. Um, if you want, you can paint on top and prime the whole paper with water. This will make it so that the paints bleed together and kind of create almost like a tie dye effect. So I'm going to do that in a small corner of this paper. So I'm priming the paper with just clean water. And over here, I have my liquid watercolors. Over here, I have the watercolor palettes. I want you guys to see this effect very quickly. So this is just water. And I'm going to put, and you see how it's, the paint is spreading. Um, I can clean off my brush. And if I put a dot right next door, it's going to almost bleed like tie dye. So that is um, called a wet on wet technique. And it is pretty cool. The kids in my classroom love this technique. It might be one of their favorites. Okay. Um, 
But if you don't want to do that, you can just use these liquid watercolors and they go on so smooth, like butter. So great. If you put analogous colors next to each other, and if you're doing a one paper with warm, one paper with cool, all these colors mix great. If you happen to do a paper with all the colors, just be careful because if you mix complementary colors, you will get brown. Okay. So the goal here is that I'm painting my whole paper. Um, so while your paints are still wet, you can actually do this technique. So I've got some salt here and I'm going to sprinkle some in my hand. This is regular table salt and you can put it right on top of the wet paint and you can see how it's like crystallizing. Now you're gonna wanna leave a little bit of this on most of it until it dries and then wipe it off like this over a sink or a trash can and it will leave all these little crystallized bits. It does look so cool. All right, now cool colors, I'm gonna be using these paints. So to do the wet on wet technique, Again, I'm just painting with water, priming the paper. I need to wake up my colors. So we're only using cool colors over here. Cleaning my brush off in between each color so I don't mix up the colors on my palette. Okay, and then I'm going to lay the color down. You can see here how you don't get quite as much color pigment here as you did over here. It's still pretty dark. But when we put colors next to each other using this wet on wet technique, um, we can't drop it like we did here, but they don't blend as much as they did over here. It's still very beautiful. If we want them to blend more, what you can do is get your brush clean, so it's only water in here, and kind of go back and forth a little bit between the colors, right where they meet. And you can blend a little bit the colors so that they Get a little bit of an ombre look to them. Okay, this is still wet. So you can see what the technique looks like if I put some salt on top. I'm still gonna get the crystallization that happens over here. It looks just as good. The only thing is you're not gonna have that bleeding happened because this is a liquid. Now, a trick I've seen online lately is that if you don't have any of these paints and you only have markers, get a piece of aluminum foil, color on that aluminum foil with the marker, get a wet paintbrush, paint on top of that color, and that can actually become a watercolor. All right, I'm gonna clean out my water cup and I'll be right back to show you the techniques with the rubbing alcohol. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to use the rubbing alcohol on your watercolors. So this is the rubbing alcohol that I'm going to use. You can probably find this in your bathroom or a first aid kit um, that you have in your house. So I'm going to show you how it works with um, both sets of paint. So I'm going to do liquid watercolors and the watercolor palette. So that's my liquid watercolors and then my watercolor palette. Now, the more you wake up and tickle your watercolor palette, the brighter and bolder your colors will be. Um, you can also go over them with more than one coat. Um, that'll make them brighter too. Um, but remember, in order for these techniques to work, your paint does need to be wet. So I'm using um, this tool. I don't know what the name of this is. Eyedropper. 
and I'm going to put drops of the rubbing alcohol on the paper. And then down here is my watercolor palette. And you can see how it's sort of giving your paints a tie-dye look. Um, where it's repelling the paint, pushing away the paint where the alcohol is going. Now the wetter the paint is, the better this technique will stand out on your paper. The drier it is, the harder it will be to see. So now I'm going to do it over here with the cool colors. I'm going to start with the liquid watercolor. and then do the watercolor palette. And now the watercolor palette. Make this a bit darker, okay. Now this time I'm gonna do it with a brush. So I have a skinny brush here and I'm just dipping into the paint and I'm kind of getting drops down by just dropping it onto the paper from the brush. I'm gonna do it over here too. And so you can see the different techniques using what you might have available in your house. So look at that. Isn't that so cool? So um, your goal here is that you want to fill up the whole paper. So you want no white spaces on at least two pieces of paper for tomorrow's assignment. Preferably a warm toned paper and a cool toned paper. We can use construction paper for tomorrow's weaving assignment, but if you want to tie a two day lesson into a one day, this is going to work great. So paint the whole paper, try and use the different painting techniques. Remember that we did the wet on wet um, look, we did the salts. This is the rubbing alcohol and this was just regular painting and you want to make sure that you get the whole paper painted. Okay, artists, can't wait to see what you do, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye.